Good morning and welcome to the Herefordshire in the sunshine. I'm here with James Heath, the head professional. This is a visitor's guide to playing the course. Well, here we go. James is going to play the odd holes for you. I'm going to play the evens. We start with a longish straight par four. And like most club pros, James hasn't seen his clubs for five weeks. So it takes a few holes to get warmed up. And a shot like that is not something I can play. As you're going to see, these are the fastest greens I've played on all year. I include the rolls of Monmouth in that. When you're going downhill, they're a little hard work. Me for a bird. We start with a par. That tells you something. Solid par. And James also starts with a par. But we've made it to the second. It's a downhill dogleg left, and it's so easy to run out of room on the right. So you might want to consider hitting a three wood here rather than your driver. Smooth. That should be perfect. If my memory's any good, it'll be perfect. If it catches the slope, it's amazing. Yeah. The green is ever so slightly unsighted. Man. And I've completely failed to fade so that. Lazy. I'm certain in the summer this would have come down onto the green. As it is, you're in bother. So you don't really want to be left of the second green. The third goes up and over a brow, and it opens up. It's a lot wider than you can see. James is going three hybrid. I hit the driver. And that is not the place to be. Don't worry, he'll get warmed up soon. One thing's for certain. You don't play shots like this, unless you're a professional. Nicely concentrated. But the fourth here is only 283 yards. It's a slight dogleg to the right. It's a hole that we might consider hitting our driver on as hard as we can. But there's trees left and there's water right. There's an awful lot of risk and very little reward. Get it out there about 175, 180. Hit your favorite wedge in, get your par, move on. There really is an awful lot of risk down here with very little reward. I'm just going with a five iron. Back when I first came here and I struggled on this course, it's because I was attempting to hit driver on little holes like this. And there's absolutely no need. Wow, wow, wow. Shows how slow the last one is. Boring golf, that's what I right, All the par 3's here are on the odd holes. So I thought I'd get into the act. 3 hybrid, up the hill, and over the single bunker. It's on the dance floor anyway. James is going 5 iron. And you really don't want to go over there. Look a bit. But... It's a good job this lad's a professional. Watch this. Ah. 
Should be on the Ryder Cup team. Right, we've made it to number six, a long par four uphill. What I can tell you about the green is it's, it's a bit like that. You don't go past the flag. Now with it being uh, pretty soft today, reaching in two is going to be the issue more than where the flag is, but on a dry day, do not go past this flag. What I fail to mention is the outer bounds all the way down the right. So I tee up on the right, aim left and hit a little fade. And that's as hard as I perhaps my memory is faulty, because all I've got left in here is a 7-iron up the hill. The flag's at the back, so I'm in no danger of going past the flag and getting into bother. The seventh, and there is no future missing this green to the right. I'm going six iron, right down the banner. James takes a seven. And that little draw is starting to work. But not quite enough. Same as the previous par 4, out of bounds down the right, so we go down the left. Oh, I hope I drive it this well all the time. I have not been hitting it like this for a long time. This green runs away from you and I was in two minds what to do. When you're in two minds, you tend to do neither. That's exactly what I've done here. This next shot will show you why you have to get down the green. Because there's no stopping a ball that's coming in from short. I should have been positive, should have been here in two, rather than three. So we take a bogey. It's fine, isn't it? Yeah, another happy bogey. Right, we've reached the end of the front nine. Number nine is a dog leg to the right, and there is absolutely no future right. You quite simply have to keep left. That'll give you a view of the green. Hopefully we'll get one of these putts to drop, and we'll get a bird. Sorry James, nobody avoids the clown music. Front. 
Right, number 10. It's roughly 260 yards, plays a fraction uphill, but it's generally downwind, and it is today. Let's have some fun with the driver. Better to be in the greenside bunker in one than in two. This little par four is wide enough to go for the gamble. That's as good as I've got. And we've been three over for the front. Sure. Now we're on the easy nine. Sure, Let's take oh, advantage. And I got just inside left if it's got speed. Yay! The 11th is a huge amount of fun, but watch the wind direction. The amount of hang time on your drive, the wind can blow this way offline. Down to the left of the green is the halfway house. Food and drink. We're playing so late in the day, I'm afraid the staff has gone home. No bacon rolls for us. Uphill chip. And as I say, these greens are really fast. I'm knocking it in for my par. After a birdie, I'm most definitely not giving the shot straight back. <laughs> Number 12, quite possibly the tightest hole on the course. But that's okay, it's only 285. You don't need a hit driver. In fact, I'd recommend you don't. I've just got my hybrid. Well, as you can see, this hole is really tight. Thick hedgerow on the right, trees left. There's absolutely no point in gambling here. And is there anybody who thinks that they need to be closer than around about 110 yards. What you can't do on this on is miss the green to the right. And James will show us why. You've got this steep bank. And you've got to play a bit of a flop. Getting used to the pace of blowing the ball off the green. But 13 is a lovely short par 3. James is going 9. And I play an 8. And then we have a putt off for who can make a birdie or not. First par five. Anything to the right of that poplar tree Shot. is good. Nicely right. Oh, that's good. Yep. And you can tell it's autumn because I can't see the green from here. So it's a hybrid and keep out to the left. Don't get suckered right. in to heading towards the green. And the green is quite severe. You have to get past the flag and put back. In the summer when your drive goes an extra 30 yards, sure. then it is possible for someone like me to pull out a three wood and have a go. But when it's soft, definitely not. Went from in to three feet in no time. <laughs> or two foot six. Yeah, good part. Yeah. Well, as you can see there on 14, you gotta get past the flag with your third shot and have the putt back up the hill. 
although that front flag position is a little severe than when it's right in the middle. Here we are on 15. This is one of my favourite holes in all of golf, period. Enjoy. Sixteen is rather narrow and you really do have to pick out the club in your bag that you trust the most. With me, that's driver. Golf shot. Is it? Yeah. Straight over the black marker. Up the left. Well I can't reach so there's no point in trying. Let's hit a decent hybrid, get our favourite wedge and see what we can do from there. Turn right. 17 looks very narrow, but it does open up. There's a much wider fairway than you can see from here. And we both popped it in the fairway, more or less the same distance. Now a short pitch. And even though the two of us ended up inside 12 it's feet, there. We were both in trouble. Because we were both the wrong side of the flag. Down below. And they don't stop. And that's going to dive down below. It's easy when you put, when it doesn't count for anything. <laughs> Number 18, the round's almost over. Just 300 yards to go. But with so much trouble down the left, lost ball, and out of bounds down the right, this is the time to be a little careful and not throw a good card away. Cheerio! Thank you so much.